Hey everybody, Fred here from plcgurus.net. So we're going to launch into a brand new series here on how to set up, configure, and effectively implement a Factory Talk activation server. I've gotten quite a few questions uh, from various engineering staffs at various facilities I've visited on how to properly set up an activation server. Uh, it's it's very it seems to be one of these great mysteries. Um, a lot of people are used to the old master disk type activations. So in this video series, what I want to do is walk through all of the paces necessary to set up an activation server, to set up all of the activations that that server is going to serve up to the various clients. And then head on over to a client machine and ensure that we can pull the license from the activation server itself. So this is going to be a multi uh, video series and hopefully by the end of it you'll be very very comfortable with how the factory talk activations now work, how the activation server works, how the activation manager software works and how clients throughout your facility will be able to pull activations from the server and license the software. So this is our video series. Let's get going. So you'll notice here I'm working in a Windows 10 machine. So typically uh, your activation server is going to be on a Windows server type machine, but it doesn't have to. Uh, you can run it on a Windows 7 professional machine. You can run it on a Windows 10 Pro machine. As long as you're running a, at least a Pro edition, uh, you can launch and run the activation manager software to serve up activation licenses to your various clients. And you will also notice that I am running this in a virtual machine. And I highly recommend that you do run your activation server in a virtual machine whenever possible, just because of portability. It's much easier if that machine say, say fails to move the activate back up the activation server number one, and then move that server to another machine that you can get set up fairly quickly. So I personally prefer to run my activation manager software in a VM. Um, but you don't have to. I mean, you could have a dedicated machine that is just there solely to serve up activations to your factory talk clients. So, I mean, it's it's a preference, but I think there are advantages, personally, in my opinion, to running these things in a in a virtual machine or a virtual type environment. And you will notice that I am running VMware Workstation. I find VMware is, is by far the most robust a virtualization software out there. There are some free alternatives such as VirtualBox that I have played with and will work, uh, but I've had nowhere near the issues, particularly with the Rockwell software and communications with VMware that I have had with other VM type software packages. So not that I'm getting paid from VMware to, to say that, I just personally prefer VMware myself. So I have a virtual machine called Factory Talk Server. So obviously this Windows 10 is a fresh install of Windows 10 Professional. It's the 64-bit version. And this is gonna function as my activation server. And then I have another VM running that is the Factory Talk client. So this could be a laptop out on the floor. It could be a, a PC in someone's office. Any clients that are connected to your network that will have access to the activation server. So, I mean, it could be on the exact same network. And, and in this case, I am gonna be on the same network, or you could be on an enterprise routed type network and it will function the exact same way, provided that everything is set up properly and all of the routing is configured properly. So let's head on back. So, well, before we do, while we're here, so you'll notice I have various uh, Rockwell software packages installed on this Windows 7 professional machine, the Factory Talk client, we're calling it just generically. And if I click on Studio 5000, for instance, we're going to get that dreaded, no license was found, you have seven days and we're shutting you down type message. And there you go. So this product has not been successfully activated. Uh, you get the seven day uh, grace period. And then if you don't provide an activation to this machine, it's shutting it down and you're out of luck, essentially. So, you know, we all hate to see this this uh, 
this dialogue show up, but of course we all have seen it. Let's uh, let's see what we can do. We'll get our activation manager set up. We'll get our activation server set up, and hopefully, with any luck, we're gonna get the factory talk client here uh, set up to communicate to the activation server and pull a license and lift this seven day. Uh, grace period for us okay so that's where we're going um, we may take a few videos to get there maybe not we'll see how it goes because I do want to go through the activation manager in pretty explicit detail so you know how each function works but let's see how things go so I'm back here in our Windows 10 activation server here so you can see I'm in the factory talk server virtual machine and the first thing obviously that we need to do is we need to go ahead and download the activation server software from Rockwell. So you can see here, I've already done that. I have this um, self-extracting exe file already downloaded, but if you haven't downloaded it yet, uh, you can simply just head on over to your web browser and start typing in compatib whoop, compatibility. And you can see I've already done that before. So it's compatibility.rockwellautomation.com slash pages backslash home.aspx. And that's going to bring you to the compatibility and downloads page. Let me just center that a little bit. And then you'll click over here, find downloads. And once we get there, what you'll want to type in is factory talk activation. You can see it's already filtering for us. And there is the factory talk activation. You can click on that. And you'll want to probably most likely install the latest version. Hopefully they haven't introduced any bugs, which they have done in the past. But however, uh, you can see this is a minor release version. So they must have updated uh, something just recently. So let's just click on that. And this is the latest at the time of shooting anyway. So then you can click on download and you can go ahead and download software. And there's the accessory files and release notes. So you can go ahead and do that. Um, you may need an account set up with Rockwell, which I assume you have, and you can just go ahead and download that software. Okay, so assuming you've done that, let's get to installing the software. So to start installing the software, all you have to do is just double click the self-extracting exe file, and it's gonna say, do you wanna extract it? Yes, and it's gonna run through the extraction process. So I'm probably gonna pause the video here because it may take a little bit of time to do that and we'll be right back. Okay, so the extraction process looks like it's complete and you can see it's installed a folder here, or extracted to a folder on my desktop. So I'm gonna open up that folder and I'm gonna go wanna scroll down to the setup file here. So I'm gonna launch the setup file by double clicking it. And it's gonna ask you, do you wanna install this? Of course. And it's gonna walk us through the installation process. We'll just close that. And now it asks, do you want to install it now? And we're going to choose yes. So it's going to walk us through the installation. You got to accept the agreements. And it's going to take a little bit of time to go ahead and install this. So again, I'm going to pause the video while it runs through this. And we'll get back to the video after it's done. Okay, so it looks like the installation went okay. And it's prompting us now to restart the computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart the computer and we should be ready to get going in the activation manager itself. Okay, so let's pause the video and do that. Restart now, yes. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're back now and we've rebooted the computer. So if you head on over to the taskbar down here, you're gonna see the Rockwell activation icon in the system tray here. So if you right click on that, you can launch the activation manager here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna fire up the activation manager. So you have three tabs basically. You have the home, manage activations, and advanced. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the managed activations and this is where it's gonna go out to your default path which is the public documents Rockwell Automation Activations folder. And it's gonna go out and look for which activations you have installed on this computer. So if I hit refresh activations, you can see that it's not finding any because I haven't actually added any activations to this uh, activation server yet. And we're gonna do that very, very shortly. Um, so I just wanted to kind of do a, a little once over of the interface itself. So you can see here, we have a bunch of tabs and we're gonna go through 
probably each one of these in detail maybe not all in this video but certainly in subsequent videos so we have a good feel for what each of these things are and how to use them so just very quickly we'll just run through them so this is the get new activations so this is going to be really the first step that we're going to need to do in order to go out to the rockwell servers and pull our activations down from there so if this is a brand new install and you have your new activations you're gonna need the red uh, important do not discard envelope that came with your software disk and you're gonna find that right on the inside of the software CD disk or DVD disk that your software came in so if you take a look at the image I'm putting up here you want to make sure you don't discard that that's why it says important do not discard uh, because in there contains the serial number and product key that you're going to require in order to validate your activation and get it from the server the Rockwell server that is so let's move on from there and then maybe we'll walk through how to go ahead and do that it's very straightforward once you have all the information so then there's something called borrow activations that will allow you to borrow activations for instance if you're going to be if you're going to license a client that is going to be leaving your network so this is a good way to do that you can borrow an activation for a certain period of time you can activate the client computer and then they can use the software until that time expires and we'll walk through how to do that in another video returning activations you have the ability to return an activation again from a borrowed computer and again we'll walk through that process uh, rehosting activation if you need to move the activations on a given server to say another server or another pc you'll want to first rehost that activation and then you can go ahead and get the activation on the new server or PC or client that you're moving the activations to. I don't want to overwhelm you too much. We're just going through these, these menus very quickly. And then renew activations. We're going to talk about that a little bit later as well. And then moving on to the advanced tab, you get the status on the server state. So you can see the server is running. So that's a good sign. Uh, something they've released recently is called Code Meter. Um, we may do a video on what code meter is and how to do that. Uh, I'm going to just glaze over it for now. Automatic renewal, same thing. I'm just glazing over it for now. Uh, file access. So in here, this is a convenient little one because it'll take you right to where the, your activation files are located. So it takes you right to that folder. Um, view diagnostics. You can view the activations, the diagnostics of your activation server. Uh, and again, we'll get more into some of these things as we move through the video series here. Uh, show binding. So this is the binding, which when you go and activate or pull an activation from the Rockwell server, you will want to give it what type of binding. Um, there's, there's three to choose from. One's the disk binding. You can do a network interface card binding, and you can do a USB dongle binding. Again, we'll take a look at that when we uh, actually activate this server. And then to rehost it manually, if you don't have an online connection, you can manually rehost and then contact support in order to rehost the activation manually via the phone. Okay, so this is this comes in handy when you don't have an internet connection, which is often the case in a lot of the factories out there. I think it's changing slowly, um, but there is still an issue. Uh, sometimes you don't always have that internet connection when you're out on the factory floor but on the activation server itself hopefully that's not an issue and you have that internet connection but we'll walk through it anyway and that's about it so why don't we go ahead and actually pull an activation from the activation server the rockwell activation server that is onto this activation server i'm i have here so that we can activate this server with a license so you know what, I realize that we're getting a little bit long in this video. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go out to the Rockwell servers and pull in our available activation so that our activation server here has licenses to serve up to his clients. So we're going to go ahead and do that in the next video and get going from there. So I hope you found this video informative. Please do remember to subscribe to our channel and like and comment on our video. And please head on over to our companion site, https colon backslash backslash 
plcgurus.net and become an active member in what is quickly becoming the internet's largest community of professional engineers, technicians, and technologists who all share a passion for industrial automation and control systems. So I want to thank you for watching. Thank you.